Hello everyone, thanks for tuning in to today's second video. We're going to do the EC Extended European Outlook for today's second video. So as always on a Tuesday, this is going to be your uh, detail. Well, as detailed as it can be when you talk about the extended range. 30-day um, outlook care for the UK and for the rest of Europe too. And I should get over that for you in a moment, just say that first video today say it was our 6 m UK weather forecast. And we've got Tesla Warty there with all our breaking features coming up for you later on this afternoon as well. So please like, share, and subscribe on all days, videos, and content. And thank you so much, everybody, for doing that. Thanks so much to ECMWF.INT for supplying the charts and the data as well, by the way. Thank you so much, EC. Right, okay, let's begin then. And I'm going to start off with the mean sea level pressure anomaly, MSLP anomaly. For uh for week one, which is the week we're currently in, the twenty sixth of February to the fourth of March. So this coming week looks quite unsettled with low pressure across much of northern and also West Europe. There is a ridge across far eastern northeast Europe and also out in the Atlantic as well. The jet stream doing something a little bit like that. And we find ourselves under a trough there of uh, low pressure between the two ridges across central and western parts of Europe anyway. <coughs> Excuse me, let's have a look at 500 millibar height anomaly. And again, we see the ridge in the Atlantic and the ridge over in the east of the northeast of Europe. And then in between, we have the trough elongating. Whoop! elongating through western parts of Europe a little bit uh, like that. Okay, so the temperature anomaly is warmest in eastern and northeastern regions. Very, very mild uh, there. So in most deep red shadings, which on the temperature scale is about 6 degrees above average. Even in the west of Europe, though, it is still above average. Just as, just got, got Spain and Portugal here looking cooler than normal. But most parts of Europe are looking uh, slightly above average in the west, or significantly above average in the east. As I say, the warmest anomalies are extending from like the Balkans all the way up to northwestern Russia and into those Nordic regions such as Finland, also the Baltic sea states of Latvia, Estonia, and uh, Lithuania, France, and into the low country and far west of Germany, around one to three degrees above average, close to normal for the UK and Ireland. But if anything, even here, just a little bit on the milder than average side. And as I say, it really is just Spain, Portugal, that's cooler than average, and possibly to uh, Turkey up towards Black Sea as well, and actually to the east of the Black Sea, because that is the Black Sea. Just there, of course, <laughs> Greece comes out with above average uh, temperatures as well. So Joe looking quite warm for most part of the men away from inland Spain. Bang! Right, so precipitation-wise, we look like this. Well, you see where the low pressure is. It's across the west of uh, Europe there. So, again, we've got Ireland and the UK, as well as France, down into northern Spain, and particularly through the central bowl of the Med, from the Valley Arachides over to Corsica and Sardinia, with above-average temp with above average precipitation. Uh, to the east of that, but lots of dry weather under that big ridge sitting across the eastern parts of Europe, so anywhere really from Germany eastwards, to be honest, um, all the way to the Black Sea and southwestern Russia coming out, drier than all. But it's particularly dry, though, in this eastern portion of the Balkans to the Black Sea, and then northwards up towards Ukraine. Scandinavia and Nordic regions, a little bit mixed. So southern parts of Norway, for example, coming out wetter than average, but central Norway and Sweden coming out drier than normal. Much of Finland also coming out drier than average, but down to the Baltic Sea states. You know, it's a little bit on the drier side in um in um, west regions, but a little bit on the west side in eastern regions. So a lot of variation uh, through the regions there. Right, week two will be before to the 11th of March. High pressure taking over across Scandinavia, starting to send this low pressure southwards through the Atlantic. The winds coming in sort of from an easterly or maybe a southeasterly type direction there. Low pressure into Biscayne and to uh, Spain and Portugal as well. Uh, 500 millibar heights look like that. So, again, the trough is in the Atlantic to the west and southwest of the UK and Ireland and heading in towards Spain and Portugal, really. Most parts of Europe are actually being dominated by that um, large area of high pressure above average heights there. So, temperature-wise, it's another very mild week, really, across most parts of Europe, right away from the 
uh, far western portions of Europe, all the way over to the far eastern portions of Europe. You're generally seeing above average temperatures. Again, the core of the warmth is like northern and eastern, northeast of Europe. So again, anywhere from Germany, Poland to Ukraine, um, uh, up into the Baltic Sea states, like Latvia, Lithuania, and also Belarus. Um, they've also got Scandinavia, Nordic regions of Denmark and uh, Sweden, Norway, Finland, all coming out around three to six degrees above average on the temperature scale there. And even down into the Balkans, again, it remains very uh, mild through there too. Most parts of the Med looking mild, although Spain, Portugal standing out as being close to average. Note, not colder than average in this week. And for Western Europe, so for the low country, Belgium, Holland, Netherlands, France, Ireland and the UK, we're around one to three degrees above normal. And precipitation-wise, in this mild week, it looks like that. So the west is where we're going to the far west and southwest of Europe, so particularly into Portugal, and also potentially affecting Ireland as well. UK could have some rain at times, but otherwise it's a dry and average scene, really, again, across most parts of uh, Europe. So uh, high pressure keeps it dry away from France, right way over to um, western Russia, really. And into the mess, again, if anything, he's on the drier than Abbey's side once more. Right, week three will be the 11th to the 18th of March. So the high pressure now becoming more centred towards Greenland and Iceland, with that lower pressure coming in underneath it. This will probably take the most unsettled weather into southwest and southern parts of Europe. At the same time, colder air might be starting to uh, get drawn in to the uh, northeast there, maybe. 500 millibar heights look like that. So uh, a large ridge really dominating across many parts of Europe, to be honest, with low pressure uh, down here. Okay, let's have a look at the temperature anomaly, and it's largely above average once more from the west right way over to the east. Um, just maybe extreme northeast Europe, and by that I'm talking about Finland, really, and to the northwest of Russia, Perhaps average to cool average, but most places again looking very mild there, to be honest, into week three across across Europe, across the continent. And the precipitation it looks like that. So the wettest weather is through Spain, Portugal, probably going into the central bowl of the bed. Uh, meanwhile, for the north, so we've got that high pressure dominating in many parts of northern Europe and out into the North Atlantic, coming out drier than normal. Week 4 will be the 18th to 25th of March. So this week again with high pressure towards Greenland and Iceland. Low pressure across many western, southern and southwestern parts of Europe again. 500 millibar heights looking like that. Again, see where that blocking area of high pressure is in the North Atlantic and up to Greenland. Chuff low pressure in the North East and to the South of blocking. Again, we could be drawing in some east northeasterly winds once again into western parts of Europe. Begin to cool down into northern Europe here in week four. So Scandinavia and the Nordic regions are going colder than average. We see Ireland and the UK returning close to normal or having no signal, as does northern Poland and uh, northern Germany, as well as the low countries and into the far north of France. Anywhere further south and east of that though, coming out with above average temperatures yet again into the fourth week and as far as precipitation goes uh, again we see the driest conditions where we've got the blocking so that is particularly through Norway uh, but also now to Iceland and into the Norwegian Sea as well so this is all where the high pressure is sitting and underneath it have all this low pressure and that brings the wettest weather of course into Spain, Portugal and France and uh, also over onto the eastern side of Europe as well so that just perhaps getting towards the parts of Ireland and, uh, and the, the UK as well. So it's in the west of the southwest and in the east of the southeast. And usually, perhaps, that we get the wettest weather. Right, that's your Friday day look at done. Let's go for weeks five and six data before we go, both. So week five is the 25th of March, the 1st of April. Um, again, we see quite a significant area of blocking around green and ice. And low pressure, though, is uh, underneath it into western parts of Europe. The 500 millibar heights look like that. We've got the below average heights coming in from the Atlantic into western Europe. Again, in combination with blocking in the North Atlantic 
and up to green ice as well. Uh, Temperature-wise, it's starting to turn colder. Or it is colder. Across Northern Europe, it's to get colder into the UK and Ireland as well. Perhaps and even perhaps into, like, France, Germany, those sort of areas. Poland, perhaps starting to cool down as well with the warmest temperature anomalies to average shifting into the extreme south and southeast of Europe. And precipitation-wise, it looks pretty wet across both western parts of Europe and also in some central parts of Europe as well. So a more unsettled scene there. And then week six will be the first, first to the 8th of April. And we still have that blocking area of high pressure around Green Ice and still potentially pulling in the wind from the northeast into northern and also western parts of Europe. 500 millibar high tonnage duct don't show much change, blocking again up here, low pressure underneath it, temperature anomalies look like that, coldest in the north of Europe, um, mildest in the south and the southeastern portion of Europe, and finally precipitation, again we see that it's pretty dry up here, and it tends to be wettest across more southern and southwestern regions. So, pretty um, stark difference really between the first three weeks and the second three weeks, actually. Um, now, the first three weeks looking very mild, if not quite warm, <laughs> across most parts of Europe. And then the, uh, the second three weeks, so weeks um, four, five, and six, they get um, significantly more unsettled and also potentially colder across northern and western parts of Europe as well. Anyway, we'll see how it goes. Uh, the model hasn't been performing particularly well through this season. And just a snapshot of what it's showing today. Um, could look very different when you look at this again on Saturday with a UK and Ireland focus. Or next Tuesday with the wider European outlook. But that's what it shows today. If you've enjoyed the video, please you like, share and subscribe. Thank you so much everyone for doing that. And we're going to be back later on with your 10 to 14 day, which will include all our regular features. So please come, from, come back for that later. But for the EC 30 day look for this week, that's all now. And thanks for watching.